On the year of our Lord 2016, the 9th of September, an episode of the Internet Radio Show Podkit was recorded. Tears were shed. This episode of Podkit was um, presented by Ryan Rampersad, Brian Mitchell, and Brendan Johnson. This episode has show notes on the gopher box the nexus dot tv slash pk 25 oh sorry not gopher the world wide web check your internet for more information this is podkit episode 25 tears were shed and they were on friday september 9th 2016 and now an annual fee of ten dollars a month this episode of podcast is hosted by brandon johnson brian mitchell and brian rampersad with show notes at the nexus.tv slash pk25 hello hi everybody hello this is a very special episode of Podkit, I feel. Why? But I'm not fully sure why. Why? Yeah, I, well, I, don't, I don't know. Wait, like, wait, do you guys Ryan, know? Where, where is Brandon? Is he in Texas? Yeah, I don't know. He's He's gone every, every any which way. I have indeed gone every any which way, mostly because I'm pretty sure that my map of St. Paul is backwards and upside down, perhaps. And also a map of Houston. <laughs> that too. <laughs> that too uh and for all these reasons i was slightly late to record today but we are recording in person oh <gasps> first time in since like episode one podcast indeed since episode which was one. titled any which, which way, way. I, I recall you know, it's, it's coming full circle i think full circle yeah i i did indeed which is the only way to travel so that makes sense <laughs> indeed it is yeah. indeed it is well it's uh it's pretty pretty poignant indeed that we've that we've uh uh, got the gang back together, as it were, um, on a day like today, because it's the day that the iPhone 7 uh, was released to pre-order um, at, at about 2 o'clock this morning, and I think um, Brian and I were both uh, rare to get one of those things. Um, Very active on Twitter, if yes. you want to check out those tweets. Yes, yes indeed. There, there are some fun tweets. Uh, fun tweets there. Um, but I guess another th- um, another thing that we should mention is that if you want to hear more about what the iPhone 7 is or does or or uh, th- how it was announced and stuff, there's a place where you can find that out. And that place uh, is the Nexus Special. Yes, yeah, so you can find that on the nexus.tv slash ns47. Yep. So right we recorded on. that just last Wednesday. Last Wednesday, indeed. Just this, two we're recording this ago. on Friday, so it's been a, a Nexus heavy week. Indeed. So a whole two episodes produced in seven days. I don't know. This is unheard of. <laughs> plus control structure. Oh plus yes, right. Ted I don't remember well, which number it is. Yeah, the Ted the Ted the Ted will be here someday. It's yeah. coming soon. Coming soon. But I'm just saying it's four episodes in two days. Well coming no, soon. I think actually control control I, structure was recorded I, a couple days before. I don't know if uh, I don't know if our CMS can handle that. Well, yeah. Yeah, it can. <laughs> it's WordPress. Yeah, it's WordPress. You can handle anything. So, uh, Brian, which one did you end up getting? I bought the iPhone 7 matte black mm-hmm. 128 gigabyte model with I... the uh, product red leather case, which just heard on Twitter, according to 9to5Mac, that, well, you know, they probably looked at it, the store page. It Same. has uh, aluminum machined buttons, so they're more clicky because the previous leather cases have been kind of uh you know it's squish, it's mushes yeah. its way into the button and so it doesn't really click and the leather kind of absorbs any clickiness yep yes indeed so that that sounds pretty awesome yeah. i ended up getting the uh jet black version because um i like shiny things apparently and uh i ended up getting the black silicone case which is almost categorically a bad decision but yolo uh so we'll, we'll see we'll see how that works out um, the best decisions are 2 a.m. decisions. Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, but then I then I went back to sleep, so that was that was cool. Sleep is always fun. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to replace my 5s, um, and which you thought was a five. Which I thought was a five until Brian pointed out, hey, there's a Touch ID ring on there, which means that it can't 
be a 5S. Or it can't be a 5. It has to be a 5S. Yeah. Yeah. So there Oops. you go. Yeah, I'm also very much looking forward to mine. I'm replacing my 6, but my battery on my 6 has been trashed. Thank you, Fog of World. <sighs> of which I'm now on the beta for Fog of World 2. So I'll be talking more about that. I Indeed. think I'll write a little blog post on the use of both versions. Do it. That sounds awesome. That sounds awesome. I've used Fog of World 2. Uh, not as ex- Well, Fog of World as well. Um, not, not, not Fog of World 2. Um, uh, but not nearly as extensively as you have. I haven't had the courage to leave my phone on during airplanes because I'm too uh, lawful good for it. Um, I, I just can't. Oops. I can't do that. Yeah, I can't. Um, but, uh, it's a really neat app. So I'm, I'd definitely be looking forward to hear what that's about. Uh, but one thing that's kind of, you know, probably made the news more than anything else about the iPhone seven is that, um, sevens now, uh, don't have a headphone jack. Oh. It's just, yes. Um, which if, if I didn't try on these stinking awesome headphones, I would have never missed it one bit, but now I kind of miss it a little bit. Well, Lucky for you, you can still use these headphones on your iPhone 7 because they will come with an adapter. Yeah, but but, but then I'll have to then then I'll have to use an adapter. Yeah, but you previously would have had to plug those headphones into your phone. So you're just plugging them true. into your phone. You just keep them on your headphones. This is true. This is true. And I think um Or you buy more adapters, keep one in your car, keep one at work, keep one in your bedroom, keep one in your pocket, keep one in And they're only $10 jacket. each. Yeah, so... so I could get like 6 of them before it's like a problem. The average cost <laughs> for every other Apple adapter, right? Yeah, yeah totally. Exactly. Yeah. No. Well, uh, somebody did a really interesting parody about this that Brian just told me about. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to steal this out from under you because I know that you brought this up, Brian. What, what's, what's this all about? So this was, uh, I guess, shown to me on Twitter via retweets. So this is the site appleplugs.com. So it's, it's a parody site run by Nicer Studio, which... I think they're a design company. So this is a little, it's like, you know, a, the, the TRS type connector mm-hmm. with a little gold, silvers, rose gold, or the space black on the bottom. So you can plug it into your iPhone 6 or iPhone 6S to just fill up your headphone port to upgrade to an iPhone 7 before the iPhone 7 is out. Yeah, but you don't have that screen at the home button that that is not really a button, but is actually haptically enhanced i guess <laughs> but i mean i guess you get the same yeah. functional effect of that one feature yeah i think the the real the real kicker with the site is that it's it's designed in you know the apple elegant way mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. unfortunately the buy button does not actually work so you can't buy it well if the... it was if it was cheap i i you know i might have bought it what the buy button should do is it should redirect you to a page that says the store is down right now and come back later yes same. oh that would be fantastic yeah same someday mm-hmm. so otherwise so yeah. i think i think the the headphone thing is really interesting because i almost never listen to my phone with headphones anymore mm-hmm. because if i'm driving i just have the bluetooth in the car on right and if i'm at home i'm down here and i can play whatever i want i don't care uh i can't think of really a time when i need it so i'm okay with it i use mostly bluetooth headphones and i enjoy them uh quite quite substantially um Especially when I'm playing things from my watch, I really like that. Um, I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of having cables cut across like my neck, everything, yeah, yeah or everything. Um, but that's because uh, space is, I guess, at a premium uh, on my desk now. Like so, particularly my my least favorite thing is to plug in headphones to my uh, desktop computer because the the width between the the actual headphone jack, mm-hmm. right, the where it sticks out of the computer, um, is Sometimes, like, I'll pull the cable back on itself because I'm sitting in so close to the desk, which is a good way Not to break good. a cable. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I usually use Bluetooth headphones and Bluetooth speakers there. One of the biggest reasons I switched to Bluetooth headphones was when I was taking my daily walks to and from the U, mm-hmm. my headphone cables would get pretty stiff in the winter. Right? Yeah. 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 So I switched to my nice Bluetooth headphones, and they're great. I bought a pair of Bluetooth headphones last April. Just, I was, actually, I had, a, I had a pair of the Apple EarPods break, the, the pair that I got with my iPhone 5 in 2013. So they were almost, you know, they're three and a half years old, and they finally frayed out enough where they stopped working. One just stopped working, I'd have to, I'd have to hold the cord, 
at the base of the connector at a very weird angle for it to actually work. So I'm like, well, I only have one pair of wired earbuds left. I might as well buy a Bluetooth Bluetooth pair. And I had, Indeed. This is just after I had seen Brandon and Ryan when they came to Morris. Mm-hmm. So I was inspired, though I didn't actually check out your headphones. We had talked on Twitter that I would. but This is true. And I forgot. Yeah. So I... I splurged, spent part of an Amazon gift card, and bought some headphones that were probably four times as expensive as yours. I think they were 90 maybe. I don't know. Right, we're right, because I got those green ones. Right, yeah. right, right. So I have the, the Soul Republic. I don't remember the model number, but they're, they're nice. But they have they sit on your neck, so the, the electronics sit around your neck where the battery is, and they, they're lighter going into your ear, nice. which I think is good, and they're comfortable. They feel light in the ear, but it means for any you know running or high activity they're going to bounce around a lot and maybe pull out of your ear and be quite annoying Mm -hmm. so i'm considering buying the airpods so apple's new headphones that are sleek they look like the ear pods they have the the cool infrared sensors for detecting when they're in and out of your ears and my favorite part is that case that Mm -hmm. the inductive charging case or yeah maybe it's not induction but the wireless charging case where you just put it in there and it works that's just a mobile case that to a keep them safe and b to charge them so even when i'm not physically plugging the, their charger or case in they'll still be charged so i think that'll be a great way of maintaining power for my headphones whenever because i'm generally not listening for five hours at once right mm-hmm. so i think this case really is an okay you know five hours is okay i know mm-hmm. people were saying on twitter or elsewhere that you know five hours isn't very long and i would agree if there wasn't a quick, easy way to charge them, that'd probably be the case. But with this, but there is. But the, there's the quick, with the this quick case, easy way to charge them is literally the case. Yes, oh, that worked too well. Mm-hmm. But at one hundred sixty dollars, they're not the most price comfort comfortable. No, not at all. But that's that's how the Apple products go these days, right? Yeah. So Sli- it's slightly too expensive for what you will actually want to pay. Yeah. But maybe just not expensive enough that you might pay it for it anyway. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So I think it will go to the ever-growing list of Wait, so things how, to bra- buy when Brian has a job. What's the price of them again? 159 So isn't that like $9 more than the cheapest iPod Nano or something, right? Like, yep. It, wasn't that $150? Yeah. Isn't so. that funny? It's, it's $10 more than three iPod shuffles. Ooh. Well, I don't know. Do they still make shuffles? I don't I didn't realize that they did. Uh... Let's go to apple.com slash iPod. Do they even and see make even iPad, uh, I, iPad? iPod touches anymore? I don't even know. Oh, I don't know if they do. Yeah, they do. I don't know when they've been. They haven't been updated since last year. So when you go to apple.com slash iPod, you see iPod Touch, A8 chip, 8, oh. M, 8 megapixel eyesight camera, 5 stunning colors, iPod Nano, get moving. Oh, they still have skeuomorphic design oh. on the on iPod the Nano. So that, that really hasn't been touched since 2010. 12 or 13 they probably to, they need yeah. to get on that man and the shuffle still exists i have the the silver shuffle with a black button mm-hmm. well i think i think with all their their new work in the uh in the watch they could make those uh, shuffles look really pretty mm-hmm. yeah they it should basically be a watch but without the band holes or imagine if that was like the apple watch like the apple watch shuffle that was oh. literally just yeah. No, let's not. Yeah. No. No. Well, no. Brendan, you used an iPod Nano as a watch before you I got did. your Apple Watch. I did indeed. I used it quite extensively for many years. Many years. It was quite good. That, that is, uh, it's not okay. I remember hearing from you that you'd have to plug it in iTunes often because it got so off on the time. Oh, yeah. Now it's totally unusable, but for four or five years, it was pretty great. Okay. Then, then year, year five is when it started to kind of cease to exist and mm-hmm. timing. But then the that. Apple Watch came out. Exactly, and then I never had to worry again, except for when the music, uh, the music app freezes, which is every time. As much as I love it, the music app freezes every time. Yeah, I'm not, when I open the music app, it's like thirty seconds before I can use anything. Yep. Is it any better with WatchOS three? Yeah, it's better. It's usually ten seconds, but that's still that's three still time a lot. improvement. I'll take yeah, it. Yeah, right. Indeed. So what's this about the LG V20? Well, so, you know, like, this is a hard season for me to be in because there's, like, new phones coming out every day. You know, there's, like, a Note 7, although I can't buy that because it's exploding. Yeah. Um, you know, the new Nexus phones could be coming out any month now, mm-hmm. probably in October. Um, there's this this V20 is sort of like an Nexus phone because it has Android Nougat on it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, this could be, if I didn't get an iPhone, which I'm probably not, um... This this is sort of like an iPhone in a way. It's you know 
has no headphone jack? No, I, I'm pretty sure it does. Uh, it, it has two cameras, just like an iPhone. It has a headphone jack, unlike an iPhone. You know, same kind of stuff. You know, it's a phone. Um, you know, I, I'm almost pretty much okay with this current phone I have, which is the OnePlus 3. And it is certainly rare for me to say that I'm okay with a phone. Well, you've had it for only four months. Right, and then so, and then and, and the le- three months and the less time I have a phone, me- should mean I'm more discontent with it. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, like um, the the six plus has better performance than any Android phone in general. The six S. Yeah, six S plus. Um, well, I think even the six. Oh, I'm sure. And five um, S are almost comparable to some of the high end ones right now. No, they're fire exceeding. Yeah, uh, because single perfor- single single threaded performance is just so much better on the iPhones, and the Qualcomm can never rival them at this point. It's over. Doesn't Qualcomm make some of the chips though? Nope. For Apple? Mm-mm. Really? Apple designed all their own chips, and uh, TSMC or maybe Samsung will fab them. Oh, right, 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 right. It's that, and Broadcom makes the wireless chips. Yeah. So yep. even even the wireless chipset doesn't come from Qualcomm anymore. Nope. I remember they had to do that for the. F- for the Verizon Early, yeah. iPhone, I believe. Yep. Um, because which CDMA. Is weird. Yeah. Well, it's it's CDMA, which is weird. No mm-hmm. one no one uses that except for the U.S. and Japan. Japan, right? Yeah. But which is basically even, the U.S. E- well, even the Japanese um, CDMA system is slightly distinct. Yeah. So they can't actually use phones because that are... of SoftBank. Yep. Yeah. Indeed. Which now owns ARM, by the way. Isn't that I interesting? Know. I know, right? How did that happen? How did that happen? Ugh. Yeah, thirty-two billion dollars happened. I, I thought it was interesting that ARM was willing to be purchased first right. of all. Right? Is the, like somebody... what, what was wrong with them just being completely independent and being their own semi-Apple? I read a thing, a thing on the internet. I don't remember where it is, but I'm going to try to look for it right now. Um, it was somebody said somebody hypothesized that it had something to do with Brexit. Right. I did hear about that. the The stock price was driven down significantly. Well, yeah. Not the stock price, but the the, the economy which caused their value to fall. Right. So this is, yeah, so this is the article. It's from Ars Technica. Uh, their UK team wrote this one. Um, essentially, really punny headline. Uh, if you're allergic to puns, stay clear of this one. But um, essentially, like, this article was kind of interesting because it, it kind of described how um, how SoftBank was kind of able to, able to, 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 uh, kind of acquire it in such a kind of almost silent way i mean it clearly wasn't silent but um how how it how it did so was kind of surprising um it seems like uh this article kind of frames it as a sort of thing that happened um because japan kind of um wants to or softbank in particular wanted to take something that they considered like a a a really valuable piece of the uk out of the uk before it became at, at um not academically, but economically disadvantageous to do so. Which is weird because they they themselves, SoftBank, is not anywhere but Japan. Right, right, right. But they're pretty massive. They own, or they were going to buy T-Mobile or Sprint. They bought Sprint. They bought Sprint. And they, and they, they wanted Sprint. to buy T-Mobile, and that failed. Uh, I'm sure they wanted to buy a lot of things, but I I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm not a I'm not a SoftBank fan, but that's just because they tried to buy Sprint and did such a poor job. This is true. At picking up an already failing company. Yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking about something that's not failing. There we go. Uh, how's about JavaScript Minnesota? The yeah. meetup that I helped to organize. We you know, had the a... thing that had, again, record-breaking numbers. This is true. This is true. We had a really awesome speaker from uh, Auth0, uh, Cass Perch, came over uh, to give a talk on OAuth, uh, OpenID Connect, uh, and some other kind of aspects of identity management, uh, which, of course, is... Uh, Longtime listeners to Podkit will know is a topic near and dear to my heart. Uh, so we're really great to, uh, really, really like honored to have them uh, give the talk. Um, there's also a really cool thing on NoBots on there. And the YouTube link is in the notes of the show. If uh, you would like to subscribe to the JavaScript Minnesota YouTube channel, I would definitely high five you virtually or in person, your choice, um, because uh, we. We appreciate it when people subscribe. It makes us happy. Um, uh, and we currently don't have very many subscribers. Okay. So if you well, like I this... like the video and subscribed. Aw, thanks, I subscribed. Buddy. Give me my high five. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you have to cash yeah, it yeah, in. Let's, let's, let's put it in front of the... There, there we, we go. go. Now it is on record. Wow, look at that. I think I'm, I hope I don't mistake that for the end marker. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Well, with that uh, aside, let's let's get back to to uh, servery stuff. Servery stuff. That's uncalled for. Yeah. Well, uh, so you know what's really fun? What? What's fun? Tailing people. <laughs> what is that? Sewing on a, a tail to someone? No, it, it's following them around, literally through the web, actually. So, um, in one of our recent projects, we have this cool thing called aspect-oriented programming. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yeah. But aspect-oriented programming sort of allows you to introspect the um, the things that are executed during the cycle of the program without actually like coding like, yeah. oh, you entered this method and you left this method. Right. You can actually program completely in a separate place, like little triggers and little events that watch and listen for those things to happen. It's super cool. So basically, on all our routes, we set up the thing so that it would put a console statement, console log, mm -hmm. whenever it happened. And then we also set it up so that we knew who, what session was doing that action. So then we had this really cool thing. So on our first deployment day, when we were giving the first live demo, not that we were showing, but the live demo product to the client, mm -hmm. they were using it for the first time. And we really wanted to know what they were doing and if they had issues, like if there were 500 errors, four fours, like if something broke, we wanted to know. But we also wanted to know what worked. Mm -hmm. So we had our aspect-oriented programming set up so that we could see what method they hit and who they were, like what user account they were logged in as. And then we were tailing F. We tailed F the, um, the log files. And so you could watch while it was happening. While it was happening. And so we put it up on our big 4K TV and uh, we watched them live using the site, and it was so cool. Right on. That's amazing. Yeah. It was super great. Mm. So this this aspect-oriented programming sort of tells me with the tale that without that, we would have had to code specific log statements for, like, hundreds, if not maybe a thousand, you know, method endpoints somewhere across multiple microservices, which would have been a nightmare. Mm -hmm. But with this, it was literally two methods in each service that did it perfect. Right on. Yeah, super cool. So I'm a pretty big fan of this. Um, this this particular package we used was Aspect J, mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure there's packages that can do it. Anything that has reflection, I think probably can do it, but I don't know that for sure. Right on. Right on. Really cool though. Highly recommend it. Cool. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't know if you've ever uh, also, you know, just like perused your HTTP traffic logs. Or, yeah. Or your Nginx traffic logs. For sure. Uh, you know, it's hard to read through those, but man, it is, it, it's fun to watch a person just traverse through your, right. your, your pages. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. I did that with a Facebook Messenger bot I worked on. I yeah. think I mentioned that last pod kit. Um, it was kind of fun to just tail off that. Right. Um, because you could, you could see all the different goofy things people were trying out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's cool stuff. Yeah. So I got another cool thing too. Yeah. So. I don't, I don't know about you, but I, I've always loved this lifestyle of one SSH key. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure neither of you do that because you're all very busy people who are, you know, juggling many different clients with many different SSH keys all over the place. I have between three and five, probably. And I'm sure Brandon has like 60. <laughs> I, I, I treat my SSH keys like I treat my computers, which is every time I decide I, I need to refresh, I just delete everything and set it all up again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Yep. Well, me. you know, that, that, that is... <laughs> That is one of those obnoxious things, like, yep. you know, the default configuration for SSH is that you have one. Yep. And so let's say you're trying to get for work and get for personal work. Well, and then what do you do? It's yep. sort of awful. You either have a VM where you have stuff set up for one, or maybe you have two different user accounts set up on your, mm -hmm. on your computer, and, you know, it's just awful. But what if there was a native built-in way? There is. It's called the SSH config file. So I was at work, and uh, we were trying to set up our um, our tail F on our servers. Yeah. And and my team lead shows me this 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 file that's you know nicely indented and like what is this file? It's it's the dot config file, mm -hmm. and or it's just the config file. And it's like, well, what is this secret file? Like, did you make this? Is it like piped into an alias script somehow? No, it's actually a first class thing supported. By SSH. Yep. And it's it's this file that you can basically specify a host name. Well, it you specify an alias that they call it the word with the word host, 
then a host name, a port, and a user. And then you can add extra things like identity files, which is the specific RSA key. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can also specify other stuff. Um, you know, you can do a, like a before command and an after command. So like before the connection starts and after it ends, or if it's successful, you can specify extra, um, you know, SSH commands. Uh, you can port forward. You can do all sorts of really cool stuff with it. And the best part is, is it interrupts with Git perfectly. So, you know, when you want to push something up to Git, you yeah. do like, like Git at some domain. Yeah. Like, you know, it could be bitbucket.org. Yeah. It could be github.com. Well, if you have two different keys, there's no way to specify there in that command. But what you can do is you can do Git at whatever host alias you pick. Yep. And it'll work perfectly. That's Ooh. awesome. Cool. And it's super cool. Now, I, what I do recommend, though, is when you use this thing, either decide to pick a default alias. So, for example, you might pick to, you, you might decide to pick, make your, your personal key your default key. Yeah. And you just you leave that as ID underscore RSA. And then, you know, set mm -hmm. up the other ones. Or decide to not have one at all and always force yourself Specifying. to use the aliases. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Right so on. I have... You know, I have, I have basically one ID RSA key for every computer. So services like GitHub, I, I see I have seven keys on there. Yep. From one Git app, my Rybook Pro, my MacBook Pro, Terra, my desktop, Dungeon, the uh, CZ Lab at Morris, Mirror, my my server, another Git app on my phone, and then Guantanamo, my server. I think... It mm, doesn't look like anything's shared, actually. No, wait. I think a prompt as well, but that's not yep. on GitHub. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, very similar story here. I have different host keys for every machine, uh, or different different SSH keys on every machine, um, and uh, my Git, uh, uh, all the keys that are on Git uh, reflect that. But um, I also have separate keys for different because I have three different GitHub Enterprise accounts, yep. I believe. Oh wow. Uh, yeah. Well, one at the U, mm -hmm. one at my current employer, um, one that's just random. I think I don't even yep. remember what github enterprises is that one's tied to but maybe it was some hackathon or something mm -hmm. um i don't know is that a thing do hackathons like to set up github enterprise sure maybe why not do. yeah or well, whatever it's if on it's there. free they like it yeah exactly exactly and then i have uh different ones set up for each of my vps providers mm -hmm. in some cases for different vpss got some set up for docker hosts some set up for uh just regular old vpss stuff like that yep AWS. I've got different oh, keys for AWS tons. too. Like every EC2 slice yep. has a different one. Yeah. Yep. You mm -hmm. betcha. And most of oh, those are. Oh, and the now, host but... names for EC2 slices are EC2. I am an IP address host name. Yep. Ugh. It's the worst. It's the worst. It's the worst. Yeah. So this this SSH config is super cool. You can use it in the SSH command, SFTP, uh, SCP, get anything right that uses SSH underneath. It supports. That's awesome. Wonderful. This that is, is fantastic. Awesome. Indeed. I will keep it in mind. Well, speaking of things that are deployed, uh, what's 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 Jekyll? So Jekyll, oh, I'm glad you asked. So Jekyll is a static site generator. If you are aware of GitHub Pages, you might know that Jekyll is supported by GitHub Pages. So if you don't want to just host a flat site that you have your already done index.html file and other pages, you can use Jekyll. So similar to Hugo, which Ryan has poked around with over the years, or year, I don't know. How yeah, it's it been a while. So I think Jekyll is the most popular, probably mostly because of GitHub Pages. So it lets you, you know, use things like layouts and partials. There's some plugins that GitHub supports. There's a bunch of, there's a front matter that you include in every page or post that has some variables you can set, so like a title, a slug, you can override date, you set a description, do author stuff, other other variables you want to write. So you can insert and kind of script things but then you build it and it's just a flat static directory so it's good for search engine optimization and easy deployment because you just pop it on a web server and you're, you're done that's awesome. more or less so i've written a blog post on my blog which you can find it on brianm.me slash blog it is titled how to make a jekyll site slash blog and it basically summarizes a lot of the official jekyll docs but it also is a little more abridged, so it kind of simplifies and overviews what I use and uses my site as an example. Right on. So on my on my site, which is brianm.me, I use most of the plugins that GitHub offers and supports. So GitHub doesn't support everything that Jekyll can do. So it only supports a single theme that you can use on Jekyll, and you 
I don't believe can use your own plugins because mm-hmm. that helps with their build time and makes things significantly more complicated for them to support. Mm-hmm. Definitely. But you know, I have I have SAS, I have Page Nation, syntax highlighting, search engine optimization, which is a fantastic plugin, by the way. It does a lot of the meta tags for you. You just have to include a couple things in your front matter. But will it also get me Twitter followers? It might if you like. Well, you, I'm referencing all those Twitter bots, the SEO Twitter bots oh, that are like right. get get. Yeah. I thought you were going to ask, will it web scale? Oh yes. Is it is does is it backed by MongoDB though? Yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah, <laughs> that's too bad. And there's another yeah. cool called Feed or sorry, well, no. Between Je- Jekyll Sitemap will do will build a sitemap for you, and then Jekyll Feed will. I think that's actually a typo. Might be. Uh, Jekyll Feed will create an Atom style R- uh, XML RSS feed. Nice. So you just include that in a meta tag in the top, and you have a feed that you can plug anywhere, and it will be updated whenever you add it at a single page or post to your site. Right on. So, and right. as well as the blog post, I have updated kind of the homepage of my site. So you might notice things are laid out a little more differently. I very recently, as in last night, probably around the time or no, I think I I, did, I implemented it before ordering my iPhone seven, but changed all the icons for my Find Me Online section. Nice to white, and then you hover. And hover. you added GitLab. I added GitLab. Nice. Me and Ryan are attempting to start. The Nexus Core V3. Oh my! Here we go. V, V1 is in is in production right now. V2 is V like 1.57. Yeah, is in production. <laughs> V2 was PHP again, which but is you, fine. you got you got pretty far with it. Yeah, Laravel. Far. Yeah, yeah, Laravel. I, I, I have Laravel. no desire to write PHP, so you poor thing. We're starting it in. I deployed Laravel this summer. Yeah, how'd did I go? mention that? No, you did not mention that. Tell I me did. More. I deployed it, and I deployed it on Windows. <gasps> okay, wow. don't tell me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but it was actually it was actually pretty great once I got rid of all the things that were awful about Windows, such as the Windows part. Yeah. Okay. It was really easy to test and deploy and develop on a Unix machine, though. Yeah. Um, that part was super simple, especially because I just used a Homestead VM. Right, which it produces. Yep, it yep. builds it for you, and then and then you just use it and are I'm, a happy I'm sure person. it took you like three hours to download the Vagrant box, though. Yeah, but I could like I don't know. Get I could coffee do other in stuff. the meantime. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Get right. really nice coffee. Mm-hmm. Really delicious coffee that took a long time to make. Yeah, like two hours. I so. could I could try yeah I could try any kind of coffee I liked, and right. then go to another coffee shop and try all the other ones yep. too. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. I can come back to work and, oh, man, it's already. That's my one problem with Homestead and Vagrant in general. This is true. Yeah. This is true. But so it goes. Well, we, we had kind of another kind of interesting development in the Apple world today or the, the world of people who think about Apple and occasionally say words about them. Uh, Marco Arment's uh, uh, podcast app, podcast podcatcher. This is a phrase oft maligned. Um, podcast player podcast player overcast uh recently uh became ad supported or is att- in the process of attempting to become ad supported it's kind of unclear uh Let's get in there yeah it's, it's unclear at what stage this is but um he's announced his intent shall we say and to... released the update and re- and released the update i'm running it now oh, oh really see i thought yeah. oh so that the it, it's out for a while it seemed like there might have been an app review issue that prevented it but or is that well, a different thing there is an issue, but I think he he pushed it out at the same time as he released the blog post. Ah, oh, okay. as I understand it. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, well, never mind. Forget- Which was, you know, like an hour, two hours ago. Gotcha. Well, forget most of the last thing I said. Um, so anyhow, uh, Overcast is getting ads, and uh, you can pay as you might anticipate. You can pay to get out of them. Um, one, a annual fee of ten dollars a month, nine ninety nine, or <laughs> an annual fee of ten dollars. Not ten dollars a month, just ten dollars. Um, yeah. So, John. However, Google there's was. so it looks like these are like you were saying Google AdSense is probably so it looks like it's kind of at the top of like your home feed view, mm-hmm. and I'm assuming in a couple other places. Uh, if you do do the nine ninety nine a year, you don't see ads. Everyone does get dark theme now, though. That's nice. That but, is nice. And if you do the nine ninety nine a year, you get the ability to upload files to mm-hmm. Marco's live upload or file upload service. Indeed. 
And if you bought Overcast 1 and paid for the in-app purchase at that time, which was four ninety nine, to get the smart speed and voice boost and speed speeding up feature. Yeah, that one. If you bought that, you can restore the purchase or if you hadn't, you know, deleted the app or anything, since installing and purchasing that in-app purchase, you will not see ads. So I got the app and I'm like, where are the ads? And it, I guess I didn't need to restore the purchase. So I, since I bought that, I don't see ads. So I feel like if, if you bought V1 and the in-app purchase, you're in a minority who is able to get the most out of the app while giving Marco the least amount of money. <laughs> Indeed. So I apologize, but that's most efficient for me. So I'm going to stay that boat until maybe, you know, I think 99 a year isn't too bad. I think it's worth to not see ads because mm-hmm. I feel like I, I use that app maybe not daily, but at least several times a week. And yeah. it's, it's not, I'm not like I'm in it too much. I'm mostly doing other things and listening through it, but yep. for an app like that, I don't really want to see ads. Indeed. Right. So I, I was reading the blog post. And so initially he had patronage with no new features, no, no exclusives, no nothing. It's just goodwill based. Yep. And that was 1.9% of people that have the application. Really? That's what he says here. And so, um, I'm part of the 1.9%. Yeah. Um, and then when he started to do the exclusive features, um, he, I think he added two new features, the file upload and the dark theme. It jumped from 1.9 to 2.6% mm, in that's one week. Substantial and then growth. just, uh, you know, over the following couple of months, it rose to just under 3%. So it stalled there and he was aiming for 5 to 10%. It's a little shy of it. And um, 3% is not near 10%. Yeah. So he needed to do something else. And so I guess, you know, I, I don't know. What was the patronage model before? It wasn't annual or was it? It was... Um, like a dollar a month? Yeah, he had kind of a suggested uh, per month donation that essentially worked out to a dollar per month. Were there a couple tiers that you could do? There were tiers, yeah. Mm-hmm. Tiers were shed. Um, <laughs> no, uh, I, I think you, you could do... You could pick the amount per month, basically, if you wished. Um, yeah. So my... um. So for for fun, I will mention that um, there's an app I use now called Join. Um, It's sort of like Pushbullet, except it doesn't require me to pay $40 per year. Yeah. Instead, it's a one-time fee, and you can patron the guy who made it if you want to. So, uh, you know, every so often I can kick in three or four bucks. That's fine. That's great. Yep. Um, But I don't have to, and it's nice this way. For sure. Um, And so to me, you know, because Marco chose to make the architecture of his application use a server... He has ongoing costs because of that. That's not my problem. Mm-hmm. He could have made this whole entire thing completely client side. And if he needed to, he could have used the tiny bit of Apple stuff that's free yep. for server synchronization, even if it sucks. Um, so I don't know. But that's not really factoring in development time. Right. But in I fact, can, bu- I can buy an too. app and I can just use it for five years. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Right. So, uh, you know, there's a balance you have to strike there. Ten dollars a year, that's great. I love it. Yep. That's less than a dollar a month. That's perfect. Yeah. Indeed. Um the I last agree. pass model of a dollar per year, I mean a dollar per month for twelve dollars a year, nothing beats that. I am perfectly willing to support I'm multiple with applications with that model. For sure. Yeah. Indeed. I'm with you there. And uh I guess we'll have to see like what else comes out of Overcast, because I haven't heard much in the way of features recently i guess uh i think he's busy uh rewriting um how uh video encoding works next oh he's, he's working on the watch os 3 version of the app because his apple watch app is still supporting watch os 1 right which is it's armcast not... by the way <laughs> indeed indeed it is i think he's he talked about it on a recent episode of um i think it was atp maybe it was mm-hmm. under the radar where he's gonna remove a couple features i think in the current version from to watch this week because so few them? people use oh. the app. He has some analytics that some, it's, so it's so few people use that per, that part of the app. Yeah, or, that yeah. he's not going to build it. Okay. So what I when I do use the Apple Watch app, which I occasionally do, it's still you know when I'm mowing the lawn or something, and I don't yeah. want to pull out my phone or something, which happens very frequently here because of all the rain. <sighs> the grass grew so fast this summer. Right. So you know, I, I just want to be able to go to my watch, open the Overcast app. If one playlist stops, I want to be able to queue up the next one. So I just mm-hmm. go to my podcast list say play that yep. i don't know if it's gonna support that or not but absolutely hopefully it will i that's my use case for the watch app as well <laughs> yeah 
then yes, indeed. I would hope that we're not the minority here. But indeed. Yeah, indeed. you never know. Well, I think it's about that time. How about you guys? It's time for new Twitter followees. And boy, do I have a couple. We need a jingle for that. A couple hundred? A couple hundred, indeed. Okay, just making sure. We do need a jingle for that if anybody wants to make one. (laughs) Indeed. So um, the first one is a person. The other two are not people. Well, sort of people. Uh, The first one is Salavat Kanav, who is uh, an independent iOS developer. He built one blocker. He also built another thing that is really cool. That's called CypherApp dot uh, chat or ci- cipher app dot chat is where you can go to get it. It is an iMessage app that will encrypt and digitally sign your messages. Um, it uses Touch ID oh. and some other stuff. That's Pretty cool. darn cool. I am very much looking forward to it. I'm keeping an eye out for um, when that beta becomes available or what when, when that app becomes available because I would definitely like to get that thing on my phone, even if nobody else will use it. As many uh, of those uh, end-to-end encryption things happen. Um, it'll be fun to just have it and know that it exists. That will be enough for me. Anyhow, the next one is uh, an account that's near and dear to my heart. This one is based off of a person, um, and it, it may or may not be run by people. Who knows? Uh, but it's DevOps Herzog. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Werner Herzog. Huh. He is a filmmaker and a uh, person who looks like that person in the picture there on, on, on the Twitter, Twitter bio thing. Um, and he says, uh, pretty profound things. Um, and, uh, well, somebody clearly decided to make him say things about DevOps and it is positively delightful. So is this thing one of those like, uh, e-horse, you know, big, uh, matrix or horse ebooks? Well, sure. It, it may be, like, it may be, it these may are really, also... really quite coherent to be honest. They, they may be handcrafted by a particular individual. Okay. Just making sure. So I, I, I do resonate very highly. The tweets forever being invalidated and evacuated from MCAT. <laughs> Same. Oh, Indeed. I don't like it. This is the way the world ends. Not with a bang, but with the cries of millions of pager duty alerts. Our system is offline forever. <gasps> it is so good, good. So on point that I could never not follow that little buddy. Also, uh, aggravating, aggravating edge cases is the last one right here. Uh, <laughs> which is uh, at bad edge cases. Um, it tweets a bunch of hilarious things like a character for every character in Unicode and a character for every character not in Unicode, which Ugh. would be awful. Um, it's like the, but uh, also hilarious. It's like the empty set and the complete set. Exactly. Universal set. Wow. I exactly. think I saw you, I saw you retweet a couple of these and I chuckled at a couple of them. That's, uh, that's too much. They are so, so high quality. I adore it. <laughs> Um, so if, if you're interested in parody accounts, those are two that are very near and dear to my heart. Anyhow, uh, that just about does it for me. Of course, I followed a bunch more people. So uh, if you want to see who those, who those are, feel free to, uh, stock my Twitter profile. I'm cool with it. I just want to read two of these tweets here. They're tied together. So this is the aggravated edge cases. An immensely popular new programming language called Star, which uses the file extension .star for its source files. Oh my gosh. And its successor, Star Quote, which favors the extension Dot star, double quote. That's dot asterisk, oh, double quote. I feel like the uh, file chooser dialog boxes have just exploded in the world everywhere. Uh huh. I think they would they would crash. Yeah. I think a lot of things would break. <laughs> it hurts. Indeed. Indeed. Well, Brian, I think it's well, your turn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I suppose. So I followed Anders Anders Borum. If you're really pronouncing Americanly, so he is the developer of Work and Copy. I think nice. he is. From he lives in Copenhagen, so it'd be more honest bomb, probably. So this is a fantastic, fantastic iOS Git application. I have been on the beta for it for oh I don't know many many months. So you can do full Git things here. You know, edit files, commit, push, pull, whatever you would like. And it's there's color syntax highlighting and highly mm. recommend it if you're ever needing to use Git. I know Git to Go is another app that I've used. I think this one seems more fully featured. Uh, you do have to pay an in-app purchase to use Push, I mm-hmm. think. But everything else you can do for free. Right on. So. Right on. I actually did download that uh, at, at, at a particular time. But at that time, I actually already had a VPS that I was using um, for some of my Git Push stuff. And um, so as a result, I actually did not make the in-app purchase. But it's good to hear that um, still developing it and that um, it gets your seal of approval. It might just make me 
uh take the plunge this after uh after after we stop recording here i'll say i think it's a fantastic app i haven't used it very much but i really really appreciate it so right on i'd like to follow its development and see what honors is up to my next follow of i followed quite a few this since last recording probably almost 10 so if you're interested in more things i've been into check out my follow list Otherwise, next is at Jekyll Arby. So this is the official account for the Jekyll static generator, which you heard me talk about earlier. So that's about all. I think they'll announce releases and issues and things like that. Nice. And the last is Icon Factory. They've been around forever. They designed things like the Windows Vista icon set. I think Windows XP icon set. They make apps like Twitterific and Bitcam and have cool people like Craig Hockenberry. Indeed. So... The, the chalk and he he came up with the term tweet so he's pretty cool too pretty legit yeah i would also follow him uh, i don't remember what his tag is right now but it's like seahawk and berry or i don't think he's chalk and chalk and berry i think that's maybe a parody account brandon is on it so we will let you know here in a second there you go see hawk and berry with one k two y's no two two r's Okay. okay. Well, here, let me just let me just put it in the thing. Let me just. It's put a it bonus follow in the thing. Yes, bonus bonus mode. There we go. It's in place. Go for it. So Ryan. Hi. Who did you follow? Well, incidentally, um, the, the, you know we haven't recorded a show in a while, I think, and incidentally, a couple of uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were all super bored because we have nothing to do at work, <sighs> and yeah, right, um, and. For some reason, the what what came up was that I I'm an active user of Twitter, and so everybody wanted to know. So, what's your Twitter name? And I'm yeah, like, Ryan Amar. You can find me just about everywhere, but especially on Twitter. <laughs> and um, so I I um I did that, and so then so then one of my coworkers started reading my tweets to the office, and you know we all thought it was great and hilarious, and we all had a great time. So then so then the 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 two people who have Twitter but but barely use Twitter uh, did follow me here, so. I am, I am pleased to introduce Carl, or also known as Doctor God Carl. Um, <laughs> he he is a specialist in uh, Juke, uh, in in the Java, which is pretty cool query language, and also uh, Ow my eye, who is Rick, who is uh, our data architect. Nice. Yeah, so pretty cool people. Right I don't on. think they tweet a lot, so just, you know, don't 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 watch out for tweets because they won't come that way. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Cool. Well, I think that about covers this episode of Podcast. It does. Indeed. And by the next episode of Podcast, some of you will have phones that are new and shiny. Indeed, we'll have so much to talk about. I think about. we should have an episode sooner than later. Yeah, like the next time you get a new phone. Yeah. So next episode of Podcast will be recorded probably September 16th or later. Yeah. So like the day after conveniently indeed yeah yeah look at that let's do it sounds good to this kid but we can't promise because who knows what will actually you never happen. know i mean i right. could suddenly just fly away <laughs> that is that is pretty close to like the deadline for my thesis proposal submission so <laughs> i think you can take a couple hours to record a podcast brandon i don't know i mean that's that's pretty serious business though we'll have to, we'll have to see what my what happens next week with my thesis but it should be positive stuff anyhow uh i think uh we'll definitely look forward to that whenever it happens and whether i exist or not but i will exist so it won't matter well if you do exist where could we find you existing indeed that's a good question you can find me uh at a bunch of places around the internet uh and around minneapolis too while you're at it uh if you are in minneapolis you can probably find me at the bachelor farmer cafe which has really awesome macchiatos um but if you're not there uh you can find me on the internet uh on twitter where i am brandon underscore mn uh at my website which is brandon.mn or my other website which is brndn.xyz take your pick between those two and you'll probably get something vaguely sort of close to up to date um if you have any questions about those things the best place to find me is twitter well you can find me on my website at brianm.me which i'm i know everyone says this i'm gonna try and write some more blog bloggy things you know, I'll probably average one every month or two, but yeah, or you know, or, or five. But I pu- I published my Jekyll post uh, about a week ago, I believe, September first or second. So take a look at that if you're interested in Jekyll and P- GitHub pages, a little portfolio site. Otherwise, you can follow me on Twitter at underscore Brian Mitchell, and that is Brian with an I. The the best way. 
the only way. Indeed. Right, like, what other vowels do people put there? I don't know. I mean, you could be a Ryan and use a Y. Well, yeah, yeah but that's but 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 Ryan isn't Brian. But no, there's no, there's no, there's no I. Like, I mean, like, people spell Brandon with E's. Brand N. B- brand space N. <laughs> brand N, yeah. Well, I just that just, username is on GitHub. Just like branding, right? Yep. Okay. Well, while you're looking that up on Of course it's wherever, be used. Gosh um, darn it. Okay. You can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter and Ryanamar. And, of course, on Doherty. On Doherty. On Doherty. <laughs> He's sitting on their sign outside. Is that, is that a, is, yeah? Is that a, is that a platform? That is a, that is a new revolutionary platform that I wrote myself while at Doherty. Nice. Or is it like literally like a wooden platform outside? Or <laughs> no, it's actually somewhere. a very nice, comfortable mesh chair. Nice. Ooh, wonderful. Sitting a Herman in a, Miller Aeron chair. Uh, maybe not that nice. Oh, okay. Maybe one step below that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what one step below an Aeron. I chair don't. Would I don't be. know either because that's that's far and away the best. Right. 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 But we'll we'll find out someday, I think. Indeed, we shall. Mm-hmm. Well, well, this has been fun. This has, has been fun. Should do it again. We will indeed, yeah. but with better phones, so that Brandon will not not well, check his map <laughs> and bike twenty minutes in the wrong direction this time, <laughs> and not wind up in Texas or Canada or Canada. Well, I, there's no promises about Canada. I might end up in Canada, you just but go too I won't. Far, I overshoot. won't. Yeah, I'll, I'll wrap around. Right. Oh, that's because uh, how that's buffer how, overflow. That's yeah. how the Earth works, right? Yeah, you just exactly. loop around eventually. Yep, yep, yep. Once you go south of Texas, you're all of a sudden in Canada. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go through the this this discussion a little bit in Slack on his way over. So Brennan said, under ten minutes, I'm on bike now, and I said, I bet three, and he said, uh, wait, hang on, hang on. So at at five oh six p.m., you said, I bet it'll only take you three minutes. Uh, then my, the next message occurs at 5.26 p.m. 20 minutes later. 20 minutes later where I say, ha, 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 I suck. Wrong way on Fairview. <laughs> to which Ryan says, uh, Brian S- says. So, I'm in Texas, basically. <laughs> to which I tweet, how's Texas? <laughs> of course, I did not respond to that because I was on a bike. And right. that's not where you'd text. And then, I, and then I run Jiffy facepalm in Slack. <laughs> and then Brandon replies with. I was like, huh, this doesn't seem right about 20 minutes ago. So see you guys in a bit. <laughs> and then I check find my friends and lo and behold, Brandon is on Fairview and St. Paul Avenue. I, I actually checked the distance between us there. I was five miles south of university at that yeah. point. I had gone five miles in the wrong direction. On a bike. On a bike. Yeah. And so uh, Brian had asked me, so where does Fairview end that way? And I'm like, well, yeah, you know, St. Paul Street. And then it turns into five, which is the way I go to work. And, and then he checks and that's exactly where you are. <laughs> yep. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yep. Oh, goodness. Don't let me near But roads, you made it people. eventually. <laughs> oh. Indeed. Indeed. And so make, make, make sure you take the west bound train back home yeah that's the one towards st paul right yeah yeah okay. it, it is totally okay cool <laughs> cool gotcha yeah st paul it is mm-hmm. and, then I, and then i take the empire builder to seattle yes fly back <laughs> great and you might actually that would get you closer to minneapolis technically but this is true this is true but mm-hmm. well this has been awesome this has been good indeed mm-hmm. well have a good one you too see you on the flip side